I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will try to understand domain and range of the function f of x equals to x to the power of 1 over n where n belongs to integers that is to say n could have values like 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and also minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on right. So all integer values n can have. So we'll investigate what type of function is this and what should be its domain and range. So let's take an example to start with. We'll take the positive numbers. So if I write, <clears throat> so we have the function f of x equals to x to the power of 1 over n. Now if I write n as equals to 1, right? In that case, the function will be f of x equals to x to the power of 1 over 1 which is same as f of x equals to x. Now this particular function is a straight line right so this particular function is a straight line so let me just sketch this here which will look like <coughs> like this right so you're very familiar with this function it's a parent function representing straight line and the domain range for this function is all real numbers correct so that's clear. So in this particular case, domain is from minus infinity to plus infinity and range is also from minus infinity to plus infinity, right? Now let's move on and take some, some examples where n is greater than 1. So let me take the value of n as equals to 2. So if I write n equals to 2, I get the function f of x equals to x to the power of 1 over 2. Now 1 over 2 is kind of square root function. Do you remember that? So it is 1 over 2 is square root. So we could write this as f of x is equals to square root of x. And this function you are very familiar with. It's one of those parent functions. And it could be sketched like this, right? Square root function. Critical point here will be all of them are going through the origin. And this point which we are considering is 1, 1, right? So most of the time, this point 1, 1 will be there on this function. So for x of 1, f of x will always be 1 most of the time, okay? So let us see what happens when we change this degree to some other even number. So if I, instead of 2, let us say make it 4, 6, 8 or something like that or any even number or a multiple of 2 for example, then what happens? So let's take some special cases. So when we take n as 4, right? So if I take n as 4, in that case uh, f of x will be equals to the fourth root of x right so it is the even root correct all those functions will be kind of like this kind of like this they will all go through one right so so you can see that the square root if i take x value as let us say 81 then square root of 81 will be 9 and square root of 9 will be 3 so if i take a number higher then the square root will be kind of low, right? So, so a higher degree function, <clears throat> I mean, the, if the root is higher, the function could be kind of like this, more flatter as it goes. But on this side, it will be having a higher value. So kind of like this, right? So these are the functions which has a degree, or which is, uh, let me write 2 times n here, right? Positive. So even degree functions will be kind of like this. Now for all these functions, you find that the domain of these functions is x belongs to real numbers and the range is y belongs to real numbers. Here x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is also greater than or equal to 0. Right? So that becomes the domain and range of all these functions. Now let me take example when the root is, when the value of n is odd. Uh, 
So we have already taken 1, we'll take 3, 5 and things like that. So we'll consider this f of x function for x equals to, let us say odd means 1 over 3, let's try this. That is to say, I'm placing n equals to 3. In that case, cube root of negative numbers is negative, right? Cube root of negative numbers is negative. So the graph which you get will be kind of like this. Why? So these points are still there, which are 1, 1, and this is minus 1, minus 1. So that becomes cube root function. Now even if I take n equals to, let's say, 5 or 7 or like this, or odd multiples, which I'm saying uh, 2n plus 1, right? So that makes it odd, right? Great. The characteristics will remain same. Characteristics will remain same. For different values, you can sketch different graphs. They will all pass through 0. They will all pass through this. So their values will be kind of like this. Maybe, maybe like this, right? So that could be any general function where nth degree is odd, right? So, so I'm writing these functions here as f of x equals to, let's say, 7th degree, right? If n is 7 will be kind of like that. Now here what you notice is that the domain and range has no restriction. So so the domain of the function is from minus infinity to plus infinity and range is also from minus infinity to plus infinity. Well could we have more cases? Now let's go to the left side. So if I use minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 what type of behavior are we going to see for our functions? Let's figure that out. So if x is equals to minus 1, we could write f of x as equals to x to the power of. If I'm writing n as minus 1, it becomes uh, 1 over minus 1, right? Uh, which is kind of equals to 1 over x, right? You could write x to the power of minus 1, 1 over x, correct? So 1 over x will give you a graph which is reciprocal function. So the graph of 1 over x will be kind of like this. And here you know that the domain and range will not include origin, right? All of the points will be included. So that is as far as n, n is equals to, let me write n equals to minus 1, right? So, so here the domain is, um, is from minus infinity to zero, you can say, union zero to plus infinity, same as the case with the range, is from minus infinity to zero, union from zero to plus infinity. Now, what happens if I make it to minus two? If I make it minus two, let me write here, here n equals to minus two, then the function will be, will be f of x, equals to negative powers means think like 1 over x, right? So it will be 1 over x squared, right? Do you see that? So that is when, I mean, uh, square root, I should say, I'm sorry for this. Uh, let me rewrite this. n is in the denominator. Minus 2 means it is coming down, but square root function, sorry. 1 over square root x. The function will be 1 over square root x, correct? So now, that becomes the function if I write n as minus 2. So if you go on the negative side, then you have a function which is 1 over square root 2. Now 1 over square root 2, x cannot be 0. However, the value of the function is always positive, so it will not be negative also. Just as you saw here, when we have even value of n, even value of n, the range is restricted. It is greater than or equal to 0. Now, when it comes in the denominator, in that case, it cannot be 0 also. Do you see that? So, 1 over square root x will now be this half of the function. Do you see? When x is very large, in that case, 1 over square root x is going to be a much smaller unit. But when it is 1, let me sketch this also here with different ink, let's say this one is good, right? So at 1, we'll have again 1, that point is common for both, this and this. However, if we have, let's say 9, 
And 1 over 9 is a very small number as compared to uh, 9 will be here, 9 as compared to uh, 1 over 3. So this will be slightly higher on this side. Do you see that? It will be slightly higher on this side. So the function, and if you take a value of half, so 1 of half will be higher. So it is kind of like this. Do you see that? So it will be above this line here and the function will be kind of like this. Do you see that? So if the powers are even on this side, what we see here is that we cannot have our domain range both are restricted. Do you understand in this particular case? So and zero is not included. So for this function, let me rewrite here, make a line. If I have f of x equals to 1 over square root of x, in that case, the domain is x is greater than 0 and y is also greater than 0. That's the range. Is that okay? So that is how the function is going to be. Now what happens if I increase this degree to negative 3? If I write negative 3, the function which I get is, okay, so let me, let me squeeze it in here. Or what we can do is, let us explore this in another video, right? So we'll explore this in the next video. What really happens when the value of it becomes more negative, right? So when, when n is, I should say, less than zero. In that case, what happens to the function f of x equals to x to the power of 1 over n? So let this be the topic of our next video. But in this video, I hope you understand what happens to this function when n is positive, right? And we'll also explore what happens if n is zero and if n is infinitely large. So we'll also consider what happens when n equals to 0 and when x equals to infinitely large, what is going to happen. So this is what we'll explore in the next video. I'd like you to think about it and write your suggestions and comments. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope you appreciate our approach on this. You can always share and subscribe to my videos and like if you like. Thank you and all the best.